chapter 23 verse 9 says, Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Be careful whom you speak to. Be careful to whom you speak to. Ingat po tayo sa kung kanino tayo nakikipag-usap. You see, the Bible describes a person who is dull of hearing as a fool. He is stubborn and he will not welcome or allow God's word into his life. And therefore, will never find out the wisdom that comes from above. Proverbs 1.7 reminds us that fools despise wisdom and instructions. There are three different words that are translated fool in the Old Testament. At uh, wala po ni isa dyan are particularly, none of them are particularly flattering to the one who is called a fool by the word of God. The first is the Hebrew word kesai, which speaks of someone who is spiritually dull and characterized by a close mind to God. Ibig sabihin po, hindi malapit sa Diyos, hindi sarado sa Diyos ang isipan, lalong-lalo na sa kanyang salita. Very star stubborn in holding in his own ways, his own thoughts, and his own ideas. So pagka ikaw ay ganyan at saradong isip mo sa Diyos, matigas ang ulo mo pagdating sa salita ng Diyos, at ang ipinipilit mo ay ang iyong sariling gawi sa iyong sariling panuntunan sa buhay, ikaw ay kesay, fool. This person will usually reject information from others and especially when it comes to what the Bible says. This is the word used most often for a fool throughout the book of Proverbs. So, yung palang Hebrew word na kesay, yung po yung mas higit na ginamit kapag describe ang isang tao who is a fool in the book of Proverbs. The second word for fool is nabal, which refers to one who lacks any kind of spiritual perception. Yung isa po ay ayaw lang makinig. Itong pangalawa, talagang kulang siya sa klase ng pag-unawang spiritual. Wala siyang spiritual discernment. No spiritual discernment at all. Naba. The third word for fool is evil. Evil. Hindi evil ha. Evil. Ang ibig sabihin ko ay one who speaks very arrogantly, flippant, mentally dull, and hardened in his way, unwilling to change in response to what he hear from what the Bible says. Once again, these people, halos may pagkakapare-paro sila, kezai, nabal, iwal, tatlong klaseng word na ginamit, Hebrew word sa translated uh, English word na fool, one refused to hear the word of God, one cannot spiritually understand what the Bible says, so therefore he has no interest, at yung huli ay very hard-headed and arrogant. That's why he never listens to what the Bible says. He doesn't need another man's opinion, nor what somebody claims to be the Word of God. So, pare-pareho po silang pumapasok doon sa kategory. Sa Psalms 14 verse 1, The fool had said in his heart, No God. This is the person that is called in the Bible, fool. Kaya po mga minamahal, People who are like this are ungodly and worldly in their thinking. The word despise in the Hebrew means to hold in contempt 
and utter disrespect. What we have said here in Proverbs 23, verse 9, is the same as we read in chapter 1, verse 7. People who are in this kind of category hate the wisdom of God. This probably sounds harsh to some who read this and react. Ano po? Pagka sila po ay uh, nasasabihan na sila ay fool at nababasa nila sa Bible na sila ay fool, they may react being tolerant of other men's view but they will hate the word of God for it. The problem is not with the person who knows and loves God's wisdom. The problem is with the fool who is anything but tolerant of God's view. It is so important as Christians that we remember that God's wisdom is simply seeing things from God's perspective. Kung gusto po nating maging wise, kung gusto po nating mag-grow sa wisdom that comes from above, let us practice applying the Word of God in our lives and try to balance things, weigh things in such a way that we will think of what God says before deciding on any matter. See things as God sees. Believe what the Bible says. A fool will not, but a wise man will. Kaya nga po, when the fool hears these things, he reacts with disgust, even hatred. He wants nothing to do with God's words in his ways. Ayaw niya. Ay, wag na, wag na. Ayaw niya. Nire-refuse niya ang salita ng Diyos. Binawalang bahala niya ang mga claims ng Bible. Especially of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But people have different opinions and wrong belief about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is whom He claimed to be. He is. Huwag po nating baguhin ang mga claims ni Jesus Christ. So written in the Word of God, search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me says our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we should be able to distinguish in our society, in our culture, what is wrong in the Word of God. Those who are unsaved are becoming more and more hardened in their ways when he refused to listen to the word of God. Pinayang po na ang mga tao ay matutong yumuko sa sovereignty o sa sovereignty ng Diyos. But fools will not. He will admire and worship everything else but God. So how do we deal with this? First, we do what the proverb says. When a person is a fool, do not enter into an argument with him. It will go nowhere else. Yung mga heated debate and arguments with people who refuse to hear the word of God and would always be hard-headed when it comes to what the Bible says, hindi na po natin yan dapat dinidiskusyon. We share to them the word of God. They refuse. They don't. Have, they don't want anything to do with it. So let it. Let it. Just let it like that. Kung na kayo magpantalo, kung na kayo magpagpanalo. Paul was very harsh toward Christians before he was saved. The Apostle Paul. Remember him as Saul of Tarsus. Yet the Lord wanted him to hear the gospel. 
some who persecuted the church came to Christ. Simply because those who were persecuted shared their faith with them. So, sinasabi ko po ito para malaman nyo na there are people who were once anti-God, anti-scriptures, anti-Jesus, but with compassion and continuous commitment to reach out to them may be able to want to Jesus Christ. Pwede po natin silang ma-win sa Panginoong Isus. Basta kailangan lamang po ang compassionate at commitment natin to share to them. Compassionate heart and our commitment to share with them. Sabi nga po, speaking the truth in love. Kasi pag hindi mo pa gaganahin yung pag-ibig sa mga tao ito talaga nakakasawang turuan ang salita ng Diyos eh. pero they can be saved kailangan lamang po natin first of all compassion second kailangan natin ng commitment okay. kailangan natin talagang magkaroon ng commitment to share and love them with the word of God. Then, syempre, kailangan natin ng consistency. People like this, yung mga foolish people na ito, kadalasan dito, naaantig sila. Pag nakikita nila yung Christiano, consistent sa kanyang testimony. Nandoon talaga, kahit na hindi siya, kasi ang problema kasi ano, aabutin natin yung mga ganitong tao. Sishira natin. Tapos pag tumanggi, pag inaway tayo, galit na rin tayo. <laughs> o kaya sa umpisa lang tayo mabait sa kanila, pero pag kinanggihan na natin yung gospel, kinanggihan na nila yung gospel, we will not be friends with them anymore. So that's inconsistency. Sinabi mo, ang Diyos mo ay pag-ibig, pero nung hindi niya tinanggap ang Diyos mo na pag-ibig, ikaw pa mismo ang nagpakita ng galit. Dapat po, yung ating mga sinishira ng gospel, whether they accept it or not, we keep them as friends. We, we, we stay friends with them and show to them the love of God. Maybe they will not be able to listen or hear, but they will be able to see in our lives. Totoo pa na ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Nakikita ko sa kaibigan ko ito. Sana ganun ang testimony nitong mga tao ito pag sila ay naligtas. Kailangan po natin ng compassion. Ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa mga ganitong tao. Kailangan po natin ng commitment na come what may, yan man ay parang si Apostle Paul nung siya ay si Saul of Tarsus pa lang na talagang hardened at uh, hard-headed. But they need to hear, even for once, the gospel. And it might be you na gagamitin ng Diyos. So be compassionate and have that commitment to share the gospel. And then be consistent. Yung pakikipagkaibigan mo sa kanya, yung pagmamahal na una mong pinakita sa kanya, huwag mong babaguhin just because ni-refuse niya ang gospel. Dahil baka tinitingnan lang niya kung totoo ka ba sa sinasabi mo. I remember the one who started communism in China. Sabi niya, I would have been a Christian if not for Christian. Nakahiya kasi minsan na inconsistent tayo sa pag-share natin ng pag-ibig ng Diyos, especially when we are turned down. Alam nyo, nakakata sa Diyos natin, mahal niya tayo. At kahit lumalayo tayo sa Kanya, mahal niya tayo. At kahit na ayaw natin sa Kanya, mahal niya tayo. At kahit na hindi tayo magmahal sa Kanya, mahal niya tayo. That's God's love. It's consistent. It's eternal. I have loved thee with everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn this? Sabi niya sa Jeremiah 31, verse 3. So, maging kagaya po tayo ng Diyos when it comes to love. Love people. Love God, love people. Hindi yung mahal mo lang ang tao pagka may kailangan ka. Hindi yung mahal mo lang ang tao pagka ilangan mo ng favor. Hindi yung mahal mo lang ang tao pagka may gusto kang gawin siya para sa iyo. Ang mga Kristiyano, tigil-tigilan na natin ang pagiging user-friendly. <laughs> Friendly lang tayo pagka tayo ay mayuyus natin sila. 
Oo, ibang definition ng user-friendly, siyempre, sa personal computer. Ha? Pag sinabing ang computer ay, o ang laptop ay user-friendly, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi ka masyado marunong, dahil friendly yung mga applications, it's easy to use. Pero sa Kristiyano, pag sinabing user-friendly, e, ibig sabihin, it's easy that you will be used by these people. Kaya, huwag tayo ganun. Because we are sharing the love of God to foolish people who can see kung ano talaga ang ating intention sa kanila. So, be consistent in sharing the love of God. Have that commitment to share the love of God. And be compassionate because you are telling about the story of love, of what Christ has done on the cross, of how Jesus shed His blood to save sinners from sin. Kailangan po tayo ay kakitaan ng compassion, ng commitment, ng consistency. Be consistent. At higit po sa lahat mga minamahal, be Christ-like. Alam ko, hindi na sikat yung term na yan. But we need to be like Christ. We need to be like Christ. Eh, di ba sabi mo, Pastor, compassionate, di ba? Christ-like na po yun. Sabi mo, commitment, di ba? Christ-like na po yun. Sabi mo, consistent, di ba? Christ-like na po yun. Alam nyo, sa New Testament, sa four Gospels, kung talagang magiging Christ-like tayo, ito po yung sinabi ni Christ kung sino siya. Sabi niya in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your soul. So when I say, be Christ-like to these foolish people, I mean, practice meekness and lowliness, humbleness, our Lord Jesus Christ. Kahit sa mga taong mangmang, kahit sa mga taong fools, like the Pharisees, Sadducees, and all the rest of these CCCs, <laughs> mga relig- religious people who have no God and without hope, try show them His meekness and His humbleness. He's always down to earth. He's always reaching out to people. He's always taking control of himself. He's so powerful, do you know that? In the flesh, Christ possessed the deity. He has all the power of the deity. He could sap people and then that people will suddenly burn or disappear. He could call 10,000 of angels and suddenly those angels will come and destroy everyone. In fact, just one angel alone can destroy so many cities and kill if not thousands but millions of people. Pero mga minamahal, hanggang sa Cruz, Christ showed His meekness, the power under control, not abuse. Kasi tayo ang problema sa tao, no? Dahil walang meekness. Once nagkaroon ng power, abusado. Abusado sa power. Nakita niyo yung pulis na namarin. Headshot. Abusado sa power. Dapat sa mga ganyan, hindi binibigyan ng baril, eh. Sabi nga ni President Duterte, dapat yan, hindi na pakasakit sa neuropsychiatric test. Eh, paano nakapasa? Ano na, siguro, minalagyan. But let us practice humility. Let us practice self-control. 
Hindi yung pakit may pera ka, may kapangyarihan ka, may influensya ka, gagamitin mo yan para manapak, mag-oppress at ng dihado ng tao. This Christmas, show your Christ likeness. Pwede mo silang paslangin, pero hindi mo sila papaslangin because of the love of God. Pwede silang parusahan sa kanilang maling ginawa sa'yo, pero hindi mo sila paparusahan dahil sa maling ginawa nila sa'yo. But first, patatawarin mo sila kamo pa ng pagpapatawad ni Jesus Christ. At the cross, the first that came out of Christ's mouth is, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. That's Christ's life. That's the Christ whom we should manifest sa ating buhay. Instead na tayo ay maghiganti, instead na tayo ay mapuot, instead na tayo ay manakit, instead na tayo ay mabuli, tayo po ay magiging kagaya ng ating Panginoon. joining us and I guess sa uh, kalimutan December 26 Pastor Alex Ocampo December 25 Friday I really don't want uh, taking up this Friday edition to reach you syempre sa araw ng Pasko at syempre susunod na 2021 God will it be about the promises of God naman at kihinto na tayo sa parusunod po and goes on until na ang Panginoon ay magsabit ito. By the grace of God, we will continue. Life goes on. Hope goes on. This is Pastor Jess Marasigan. At sana na po, ang buhay natin, gamitin natin para sa kamalatian ng Panginoon. Reach out to people. Mag-ingat po tayo sa pakikipag-usap sa mga mamang. Hindi dahil baka tayo ay isakta nila, kundi baka tayo yung makapanakita nila. Ay sira ang testimony natin yung pagkaganyan. <laughs> Alright? Tayo po ay mananalangin muna. Manamin ang Diyos. Salamat po sa natapos namin pag-aaral na yung salita. At sana po, Lord, ay uh, i-bless mo ang bawat uh, nag-watch at uh, nag-share ng mga live video na ito. Thank you for Benjamin Carlisle uh, dear so time friend so good to see him joining us here in uh, Hope Goes On I pray that you bless him and his family sa nako ay baruhi ka na magamitin ka pa sa iyong palubalatian Salamat po sa kanyang pag-join sa amin dito sa Hope Goes On. Salamat po na ang programang ito nakakarating hanggang sa Charlotte Order Line, sa Japan, sa Dubai, sa Singapore, sa Vietnam, at kung saan-saan pa po sa ibang, ibang dako ng mundo. What a powerful tool that we can use to share your word and preach the gospel. Sana nga po maraming kaluluwa ang maligtas at sana po maraming mga kristyano ang mapalakas. Alayin ko po sa iyo yung mga prayer request kanina, yung mga may sakit na binasa namin ang kanilang mga pangalan. May that you will reach and touch them, heal their bodies. At uh, sa lalo mo dalig panahon, sila ay humanin. Help us, Lord, our nation, in every nation around the world to be able to come out of this pandemic stronger. Sana po ay this Christmas, huwag nang magkaroon pa ng second or third wave ang COVID-19. Sana po ay sa iyong sovereignty, Panginoon Diyos. Ikaw ang kapangyarihan Diyos na kahit bukas pwede mo patigilin itong pandemic. So we humble ourselves to you. 